Okay. May I have your attention, please? We're here to discuss uh, LinkedIn. And in this uh, presentation, I'm going to share with you some facts, some uh, context, and strategies that will help you with growth on the LinkedIn platform as it relates to Office 365. Now, within this session, there are no questions that will go unanswered about LinkedIn. You can ask me any question you want about LinkedIn. There will be an answer. I travel the world discussing this topic in addition to others, but we'll get into my background now. I am a why kind of guy, meaning before it's important for you to understand who I am and what I have to share, it's important to understand why it's important. That's, I'd like to know why before I understand what. So LinkedIn as a platform amongst Fortune 500 companies is the most used social media platform. So we're going to go into some strategies in terms of uh, companies. So think about whether you are, I'm a, a business owner myself, you may be a business owner, uh, or you may represent a company. So uh, we're going to cover this topic from a number of different perspectives, whether you are an intern, whether you are a business owner with employees, whether you are a speaker and or professional, and give you the tools to succeed. I have a certain path that I'm going down, but we can take pit stops and detours to make sure that you leave with the value that you came for. This session is also being recorded. So when we talk about company strategy, uh, the context for this particular presentation is um, from a, a company standpoint. So this is part of the reputation management series of lectures that I deliver. So welcome to the 2019 Reputation Management Tour. This is part two, and this is LinkedIn for the Work Center. So I'm going to give some context in terms of part one versus part two to uh, give you the idea. So uh, before we go deeper into the topic, thank you to the sponsor, which I'm sure you visited the uh, various groups. And after this particular session, uh, you get the opportunity to win prizes. So make sure you are present uh, for the raffle at the end of the day. Now, when we talk about the, uh, the big idea with the reputation management session in terms of part one, so there's two parts to this presentation. All last year, went around the world delivering part one of this lecture series. So when we talk about Reputation. Um, one of the, the big ideas that I have is that reputation is a form of currency. Your reputation in terms of your knowledge, your skills, your abilities, it is uh, an actual, um, it has value in the marketplace. So when we talk about the on-demand society, whether it is uh, Netflix, whether it is Hulu, whether it's Amazon, the, the way that we consume information and find information is if there's an event that happens, let's say on television, we'll go to YouTube and watch the, uh, the replay. So the on-demand in terms of searching for information and or content networks is the way that the world operates today. So when we start to talk about reputation, every one of us in this room has applied for a job at some point. Now, what happens in today's job market is that when you apply for a job, a hiring manager, a decision maker, now does a, a search, whether it's Google or Bing for your particular name, your reputation, before bringing you in for an interview. So your information is 
uh, it will say valuable in terms of you getting your first or next job. If you're a contractor, landing your next client. If you're a business owner, hiring employees. If you do a search and that individual is, let's say, uh, doesn't have the right uh, qualities, then you won't bring that individual in for the uh, interview. So your first task for those of you who have your smartphone available or your laptop open, is simply go to your favorite uh, search engine, open up Google, and simply do a search for your first and last, last name. So uh, as a caveat, well, it, we all hate it, but it's, under, it's important to understand why this is important because when you're applying for opportunities, whether it's a scholarship, whether it's a, a job opportunity, the people who are making the decision, the decision makers are doing this. So it's important for you to understand what you're going to find. Now, there's a caveat here. If your name is Jim Smith or Mary Jones, there's a million Jim Smiths and a million Mary Jones in the United States and throughout the world. So you have to add additional search parameters onto the search. So it may be Jim Smith, New York City, Jim Smith, SharePoint, uh, Jim Smith, Azure, Jim Smith, Office 365. And that is your particular, let's say, skill set. If your name happens to be Shadidi Laser like mine, you won't have that problem. It's not too many of, uh, let's say, my name uh, in the area. So Google search your first and last name and let me know what you find. Very important. Okay, when we talk about redefining reputation, as I've mentioned, if you, you take nothing else from what I'm going to share with you, reputation is an asset. And I actually have the, the dictionary definition of what an asset is. So a useful or valuable thing, or uh, let's say, in this context, it would be a thing. So your reputation is what is being leveraged to increase your salary. Your reputation is what is being leveraged, let's say in my case, I am a featured speaker at this event. In order for uh, me to be in this position, there was a search that was done on my credentials, my qualities, to determine if I would be valuable for this event. Whereas someone who is a new speaker, uh, that may not work in their favor because of the level of competition in applicants to be a speaker at this event. So question that I have for you before we even get to LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is the dashboard that is utilized to manage the reputation is, how are you leveraging your reputation as an asset? Are you leveraging your reputation as an asset. And if you're not, then we need to work on our action plan during this time that we have together. Now, when we talk about LinkedIn by the numbers, uh, the truth is that in terms of uh, conversions on social platforms, LinkedIn is by far the leading platform in terms of business context, career context, by far in terms of uh, conversions. Now, and conversions can be measured in different ways, but when we're talking about a business context, it measures the uh, success rate of uh, the transformation of visitor to customer. So. Transaction, uh, in terms of a transactional network, LinkedIn is by far where things happen. So what we're going to cover in this particular session, come on and have a seat. Very welcome. What we're going to cover in this topic, if you choose to accept, is we're going to cover Best practices for operational readiness. As I mentioned, this the context of this session is LinkedIn for the work center. Now, in order to make sure that your work center is ready for uh, 
LinkedIn integration with Office 365, you first have to make sure that your LinkedIn individual profiles are, let's say, um, fine-tuned and ready to go. So what I'm going to walk through are the, uh, the building blocks to an effective LinkedIn platform. Uh, or profile. When LinkedIn is optimized, LinkedIn in itself is a search engine and it is a very, very powerful tool that is powered by AI or Microsoft's AI. And let's say earlier today, Prashant Boyer did a topic on building uh, intelligent bots, a friend of mine. And uh, towards this particular platform, LinkedIn has the same underlying AI. And it's the only social media platform that becomes smarter uh, the more that you use it because of that. But if you don't understand, let's say, how to use it and what keywords to feed into the system, then uh, garbage in, garbage out. Now, we're also going to cover the building blocks to the LinkedIn governance plan. So when we talk about governance or the rules that dictate, let's say, uh, human behavior with systems in a uh, work center, there are, there's very little guidance that currently exists on LinkedIn governance. As of today, LinkedIn is available within Office 365, meaning on your Office 365 dashboard, you can activate or configure LinkedIn usage. So if you have this tool, which contains data for your employees, and there's no policies or procedures, then it is a recipe for a disaster. So we need to start to think about those of you who may be in HR, those of you who may be business owners, so on and so forth. Now, as I mentioned, I'm a wide kind of guy, wide kind of guy. I don't want to understand who a person is unless I understand why it's important for them to what they're sharing with me. So I gave you the why. Now it's the who. Chad D. Laser. I am a best-selling author. And uh, of the book on the left, I wrote that book with a few of my friends in business. And also I'm the technical editor of Mastering Office 365 administration. Have a, a, a pretty interesting uh, combination or intersection of uh, backgrounds in that from the time that my 10 toes touched down on planet Earth, I've been involved in small business, family business. I was raised in a family business. So business is the context through which I see the world. And um, military vet and also, um, let's say, on the uh, uh, SharePoint side of things, for the past uh, for the past 14 years, consecutive years, 14 consecutive years, I have hosted a Microsoft um, technology event each and every month. My claim to fame is the Baltimore SharePoint Users Group and SharePoint Saturday, which I've hosted for about 12 years. So if you come to the area, you can attend our annual conference. So I am the founder of Managed Path Solutions, where uh, Managed Path's focus is a, a bit different in that we're not looking for SharePoint projects or uh, we build Microsoft practice. So if someone or a, a company is looking to scale to the next level and go to new heights, we provide the uh, support on the back end to help them grow. So it may be a talented developer or a service provider. We provide instruction, maybe social media management. One of our more popular services is uh, diversity training. So Microsoft has a very uh, strong initiative to increase diversity across the board and Many companies, many practices have the intent, best intentions, but don't have the processes to do so. So we provide that guidance. And also for, let's say, subject matter experts, which in this case would be featured speakers, we help them to leverage their gifts and influence to help them, let's say, uh, whether it's building their blog, becoming better speakers, but more importantly, help them to 
become self-employed the right way. And those who are actually a bit more talented at this, we help them build out their practices as well. So different platforms. Now, my approach to entrepreneurship is uh, what I like to call uh, strategic philanthropy. Strategic philanthropy. So uh, building business while giving back. So any services that are purchased through Managed Path Solutions, we provide uh, a community uh, initiative with that. Uh, and the latest initiative is the 1000 Classrooms Campaign, where we um, target digital illiteracy. There's a direct connection between illiteracy and let's say uh, prison rates and just a life of lack and limitation through not being able to read. Now in today's world, uh, digital illiteracy is something that is, let's say, not necessarily diagnosed. Digital illiteracy may be you type with one finger or you, let's say you can't renew your driver's license online or you lose your job and you need a relative to do the job search online for you. So we provide, it, it's very common. And so we adopt classrooms and underperforming schools and upgrade technology to ensure 21st century learning environments. So since 2000, started the company in 2012. So since 2014, that has been our focus. So much so that if you have a child in the uh, Baltimore, Maryland school system, and they use the iPad since 2014 for learning purposes, there is an 80% chance that it came from that initiative uh, with myself and my partner. So something that is near and dear to my heart. Say hello to Ms. Palomar's class. We get company support? Yes. We do a philanthropic flash mobs where we uh, get a bunch of uh, resources and people donate to different uh, projects, procedures, so on and so forth. A lot of fun to give back. Now, uh, on the SharePoint side, I, I do a little SharePoint. I've been an architect for many years. Now, the fun fact, I'm the only person to have architected the official state websites for the state in which I was born, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and the official website of where I live, which is Maryland. So um, in terms of mobile phone first uh, websites, um, in one year, uh, deployed, um, as it says, 47 uh, public facing uh, SharePoint sites. So I know a ton about Let's say uh, disaster recovery. State websites are uh, a bit um, more intense in that if services go offline, there are millions of people who are affected. So it has to work. So I've done a lot of work with um, architecture, government clients, uh, private sector, so on and so forth. But this for this particular topic, we're going a bit into LinkedIn as it relates to Office 365. And I'm the president of SCORE uh, Small Business Administration in my region. It's the third oldest chapter in the country. Now, for the gifts, uh, in terms of bonus value in this session, as I mentioned, this session is being recorded. Everything I'm saying is being recorded. There's a video that will be produced from this session. You will have access to that session. Now, if let's say you want to see some of my earlier work, if you go to this link right here, or right there, or right there, or right there, uh, this is a one hour LinkedIn deep dive that I delivered for the Lawrence SharePoint user group. Great, it was a great session. Um, this content is completely different from that content because as I mentioned, that this is reputation management part two. So the question is, where can I watch part one? You can watch it right there on that link. So, and for those of you who tweet, I'm giving you some content here. Tweet to your audience. So you can say, message ID, that's me. 
and is teaching the magic behind when you can <laughs> use the hashtag SPSNYC so that your friends can see that you're at the event. So, in addition to the uh, bonus value, you will receive LinkedIn and Outlook integration, guys. So, in putting together this presentation, I created screenshots as I was working and I created various guides for your viewing pleasure and learning enjoyment because I care about your learning and enjoyment. You also receive the uh, uh, advanced, uh, let's say, copy of the LinkedIn and Office 365 integration online course. So creating a course and since you are in the room, you will receive the first version of it. It's free. Everyone else will have to pay for it, but you get it for free. You and also the LinkedIn and Microsoft Flow Quick Start Guide. Now, how do you get access to all this greatness? Pick up the smartphone like the lady is doing in the screenshot right here. And text LinkedIn 2018 to 44222. And that is how you will gain access to the value. Now, the slides and the link to the slide will also be sent to you. And the video that is being recorded right now will also be sent to you. Obviously, I can't send it right now because I'm recording the video right now. But later, like when I get home, I will send you the video. But I can't send you the video unless the text LinkedIn 28, there's no spaces. Not case sensitive. Text LinkedIn 2018 so I can give you all the free stuff. Moving on. Okay. Now, I teach a lot of workshops, but I, I really enjoy the hands on uh, learning environment. So, for best results, you know, because I can sit here and tell you a lot about LinkedIn, but you have to go home into the real world and actually use this stuff. I want you to win. So, if you have a laptop, you can log into LinkedIn. If you have your smartphone, you should download the LinkedIn app. Use this time to just get set up with LinkedIn. When I go around the country and I have these workshops, it's always this epiphany. I, I never heard of LinkedIn. I, I can't <laughs> believe all this stuff is available. Use this time. Create your LinkedIn. There may be one person in here. Don't raise your hand. But it may be one person in here, I'm going to guess, that um, may not even have a LinkedIn profile. It's the number one professional network on planet Earth. So you should have a presence on LinkedIn. So create your LinkedIn. Go to LinkedIn.com and create your LinkedIn profile today. And so since this is a company context, and you may say, I'm not a business owner. I'm not into that. I don't want a business. Then your personal brand is what, or your yourself as an individual is the context through which you will explore this topic. So there's something for everyone in this session, but make sure you access LinkedIn. Okay, and we'll also, I believe we have uh, speaker evals as well, somewhere in this room. I believe they're in the back. Okay, so when we talk about how your company or how you as an individual is multiple paths here, how do you utilize LinkedIn? There's a few, uh, a tale of many cities here. It could be, what is LinkedIn? I don't know. Uh, this is very common, especially with um, uh, decision makers who were not raised with social media. There, there are some younger individuals in our room where you were raised with a smartphone and social media. It's not even something you, you think about, but for some people who may be older, the internet is something that they either learned or social media is something that they had to figure out. So many in many companies, they feel social media is a time waster. So that often happens. There's also understanding the importance, but needing a roadmap. 
And then there's the, the power users. I had some great conversations today where uh, LinkedIn is a major business driver for our marketing, our sales, and our branding. And that's exactly how they sound when they say it. So um, the question is, should companies be on LinkedIn? Um, when it comes to web traffic or attention or eyeballs on, let's say, your business websites or your personal blog that you're using for business or for your career, over 50% of all traffic, attention, eyeballs that goes to uh, business-related websites or blogs comes from LinkedIn. Many of the decision makers are on LinkedIn when compared to other platforms. So if you share your content on LinkedIn, the let's say the result is that they will go to your website. Fun fact, LinkedIn is the highest acquisition in the history of the Microsoft Corporation. Uh, Microsoft paid $26.2 billion <laughs> to acquire LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a Microsoft, just like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Office 365, Microsoft LinkedIn. Like I'm not at SharePoint Saturday because People like me. It's actually a Microsoft product. They really like it, but yeah. Uh, so the question is, why did Link, why did Microsoft acquire LinkedIn and how does it tie into Office 365? I do have an answer for that, but I want you to think about it before I tell you. And in terms of let's say job search, some of you may be either searching for a job or you want to make more money and search for new and better jobs. And LinkedIn in itself is starting to replace the traditional resume in that your LinkedIn profile is uh, incredible in terms of uh, sharing your overall um, career information and you can upload resumes within the uh, career or job section of LinkedIn. And there's 3 million active job listings. And when you integrate uh, AI with the job search, it makes it more of an intelligent job search. Okay. Now, in reputation management, or let's say part one of this particular uh, presentation, I. This is the exact same slide. But what I, I shared was the concept of, we've all heard the idea of six degrees of separation. We've all heard that concept. Um, my theory is that the world is a lot smaller than when this theory first came about decades ago because of, let's say, search engines and also social media. My theory is that uh, there's only two to three, well, actually three degrees of uh, separation from one person to anyone else in the world. And if you, you take me up on this pop quiz and actually go to LinkedIn, there's only three degrees of uh, network. So I think they agree with me. Also, when we talk about, let's say, the future, there are 11 million millennial decision makers who have active LinkedIn accounts. The future is now. Now, when we talk about Office 365, because this is a SharePoint event, it's SharePoint Saturday. I know where I'm at. I'm not at the job fair. I know where I am. I know where I am. I'm not lost. So we this this particular slide, I did not create the slide. This slide comes from Microsoft. Microsoft, I took this slide, probably. From Microsoft. So when we talk about, uh, let's say, Office 365 profile, I do work with SharePoint every day. So we have a, a profile for an individual, and what you see are the, the popular, uh, let's say, uh, Microsoft apps that we use every day, whether it's Skype, which would be uh, Teams, we have Excel, we have Word, we have SharePoint. So the profile, anywhere that you start to see profile data, LinkedIn will be integrated, well, is integrated with 
uh, let's say, configuration with those uh, particular profiles. So you'll start to see profile data across the line of business apps that you use every day. You'll start to see the rise of the business user profile. and the beginnings of intelligent professional network where you can import your contacts from LinkedIn and collaborate within an office setting. So there's a lot that you can do with, uh, let's say, Cortana nowadays, where you can utilize Cortana as a, um, a meeting assistant using LinkedIn. And when a meeting is set, you can uh, look at that person's LinkedIn profile from within, uh, let's say, your calendar. And this is the answer to the question, why on earth would Microsoft pay $26.2 billion for LinkedIn? And when we talk about the Microsoft graph, uh, and Office 365 as a whole, if you think about the world as like one big, uh, like a map, there are specific territories where Office 365 is, let's say, not allowed at this time. So the combination of LinkedIn's underlying business data, which is known as the LinkedIn graph, and Microsoft's underlying business data, which is known as the Microsoft graph, as you can see, again, this slide, I did not create this in Photoshop. This comes directly from Microsoft. So the application that you can begin to build, and you can go to uh, Rob Windsor's session. Uh, earlier today, he had a session on essentially um, getting started with building apps with the uh, Microsoft Graph. So you can start to integrate the same uh, people there, with jobs, coworkers, insights, uh, based on LinkedIn business intelligence. It is a rich data set. Yes, ma'am. And what's the question? What is the graph? Um, uh, the LinkedIn graph has been around for uh, many years. Now it's available within, let's say, the Microsoft development context, whereas the Microsoft graph is currently available through the acquisition of LinkedIn, now you have the ability to build applications and call, uh, let's say, objects from the LinkedIn graph and build applications. So before, let's say, if you were to build, let's say, a uh, contact mm -hmm. database, now it's easier, or let's say from a development standpoint, you can spin up a solution much faster, building a contact database and including, let's say, LinkedIn insights or let's say career information. So if I'm building this contacts database and I want to include the last three or four jobs from the LinkedIn professional profile, I can import that object and have that as let's say available objects as I'm building that particular solution. And you can take any one of these select scenarios, whether it's uh, let's say uh, the calendar at the top, and if I want to, let's say, if I add an individual to my Outlook calendar, if I'm building an application, and I want to find out, let's say, this person's uh, org chart, mm -hmm. uh, where does this person sit on the org chart if I'm having a meeting with them? Because maybe I want to meet with the decision maker and not someone who is, let's say, a technical resource. Then you can build that application using these two resources. You're welcome. Now, what makes, and these are actual screenshots from LinkedIn, this is not from Microsoft, I actually created these screenshots. And you'll have access to them if you text LinkedIn 2018 to But keywords, keywords are very powerful uh, in terms of the underlying engine too. LinkedIn, and so it's important that you understand in order to be successful with the LinkedIn platform, uh, and as companies start to import LinkedIn data into the organization, if you are a decision maker and you're importing, let's say, incomplete profiles, then 
it creates more work for you on the back end. So understanding the keywords that drive your industry. The hint is that I created a lot of keywords right here. So when you get to look at the video, you can pause it and actually take a look. So you have, uh, let's say, your endorsements area. You also have, this is within career interest. And as I mentioned, LinkedIn is a extremely powerful search engine. And in more advanced sessions that I deliver, I go into how to configure Microsoft Search with LinkedIn data. This is, that's like part three of this reputation management, but where we go a, a little bit behind the scenes. So when you understand your keywords, it allows you to um, do quite a bit. So here are the integration points with, let's say, LinkedIn and the most popular Microsoft apps that we all know and love. Um, OneDrive, for example, you can collaborate with LinkedIn contacts without having their uh, email uh, within uh, OneDrive. Uh, OneNote, you can utilize OneNote to, let's say, automatically publish content directly to LinkedIn. Microsoft Flow, you can utilize LinkedIn uh, Flow uh, templates and uh, connectors as well. Uh, SharePoint, you can publish content to LinkedIn from a SharePoint list. I have an example of that in this session. Uh, for Microsoft Outlook, using the Outlook profile card, you can now look and see what, let's say, um, the contacts are on LinkedIn. And user profiles, I showed you the wheel with the uh, profile everywhere. In Microsoft Search, you have to tune in for part three of the reputation management tool. And I will walk through that entire configuration. Dynamics is a very powerful uh, integration point with uh, LinkedIn. And we also have LinkedIn uh, Sales Navigator. I do have a LinkedIn Sales Navigator as part of uh, some of this walkthrough. Okay, so let's uh, go through this here. So what I'm going to share with you are some best practices that will help you with uh, your LinkedIn uh, efforts, because I care. I don't, I don't want you sending me LinkedIn requests with bad profile, it hurts my eyes. So let's see here. First things first, so we're covering this from the context. I'm gonna give you two perspectives here. Um, if you are a business owner, or let's say you are a manager at a company, these are some uh, aspects that you have to look out for. I'm also going to give you some best practices in terms of you and your LinkedIn profile uh, and what you can do. So uh, a few caveats here. This is a premium version of LinkedIn, which provides a number of uh, bells and whistles, insights, analytics, uh, as you can see at the right above my smiling face, uh, you see premium. So if you can also, if you are a military veteran, uh, you receive one year of LinkedIn premium free of charge in case you did not know. Huh? So make sure you sign up for that. So, uh, and also at the upper right, of the browser, you have the sales navigator icon. So again, that's that's a more advanced topic, but for this particular session, we are going to go through some best practices. So number one, uh, profile picture. So profile picture, best practice. Number one, uh, what do I wear? What do I wear in my profile picture? Dress one level above the industry in which you work. So if you are a graphic designer and you work in an office that is completely laid back and everyone wears uh, flip-flops and sandals and you haven't worn a suit in five years, it's okay. 
just put on a college shirt. It's okay. And dress one level above what you wear in the office. Uh, let's say um, another best practice. Um, solo pictures only. LinkedIn profile pictures are uh, not used for, let's say, group photos. Um, do not take pictures with your significant other. Do not take pictures with your pets. Best practices. Use a uh, professional, uh, let's say, proper lighting, uh, so on and so forth. This image was uh, professionally shot. And, um, but also, the Microsoft Store uh, will allow you to take uh, LinkedIn uh, profile pictures free of charge. That is why you're here. I'm giving you all the things you did not know. What about buildings? What about backdrops? Backdrops. You want to have a solid backdrop. It doesn't matter if it's, um, let's say, uh, a brick wall versus, let's say, uh, a solid painted wall. Make sure it's uh, solid so it does not clash with, uh, let's say, either your skin tone or uh, the what you have on or what you're wearing. Solid background. And... Um, Avoid the selfie. Avoid the selfie. Have someone else hold your phone steady, and uh, and don't uh take the pics like you got the seatbelt on. Like take your time and take a professional photo, please. So, uh, so that's the uh the first thing. Now let's look at a profile here. Let's see. Mm, view profile. Mm. Your profile is not a resume. Your profile is not a resume. Your resume is a resume. Your profile is not a resume. What do I mean by this? What is he talking about? Write your profile as if you want someone to actually read it. So, Here's an approach that I use. And the subtle strategy behind this is um, if you read this profile and you actually are interested in working with me, by the time you get to the bottom, it's almost like you've interviewed. Because I've, I've thought up the questions that people often ask me in a professional or hiring scenario, and I put them on a profile and I actually answered them. So. When it comes to this profile, when they read through it, it answers all the questions that you need in order for you to make a decision. So that if you contact me, the deal is already done. So that's just one approach. But so I, I have a, a few segments here. What an exciting day looks like for me. So I'm giving you excitement. This is what I love to do, um, which conveys passion, which conveys, let's say, positive energy when you're reading my profile. Uh, what qualities set me apart from my peers? So I go into what makes me good at what I do, which is important if you want to hire me. Hopefully one of you wants to hire me. Can you read? What help? Uh, and so what recent projects am I most proud of? So this gives the, instead of saying, well, I am the best at this and I, you know, it's, it's done in a different way. So. Scott, you know, you can put questions on your profile, but it is not a resume. Do not copy and paste your resume into your LinkedIn profile. This is the most common mistake that is made uh, with LinkedIn profiles. Now, let's go here. The media section of your LinkedIn profile. Well, many people, tell me, is uh, anyone here not familiar with SlideShare? Anyone? SlideShare? Okay. SlideShare is a platform that allows you to share documents, presentations, so on and so forth. Um, many of the speakers at this event will post their slides on SlideShare. It is, yes. Uh, so, uh, the same as a PowerPoint, like on Drive, mm -hmm. PowerPoint, mm -hmm. if you share the file. 
Yeah. It's like a, a public site that allows people to share. So you can, like, YouTube is a site that allows people to upload yeah. videos. SlideShare is a platform that allows people to upload presentations. Yeah. So it's a, a, let's say, a place where you can view millions of presentations. And it helps you to build your reputation. I think I was doing when you go to a slide and you see presentation. Yes, you're looking right here. This is SlideShare. Yeah, exactly. These are from SlideShare. Exactly. So LinkedIn acquired SlideShare. If again, the, the second thing, if you listen to nothing else I said in this presentation, number two, this is the second one. Um, create a SlideShare account. Upload your best ideas or best professional work. This is where many don't don't put the, the secret sauce in terms of what you know, but put let's say password protected. Ah uh, no, it's it's um <laughs> I do not uh password protect my content. Uh, but uh, you 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 can't steal from the source if. And the idea is to share so that you it helps to build reputation and uh, make uh, hiring decisions. So that is of um, huge importance. Next, let's see here. Content. If if you have a blog, if you are an individual who has a blog, the question is: Can I put or can I share? Can I upload? Can I copy and paste? my content to LinkedIn? The answer is absolutely yes. It is a best practice, it is a recommendation. I am commanding you to put your content on LinkedIn from your blog. The reason why uh, repurposing that content is powerful because as I mentioned, more decision makers are on the LinkedIn platform than any other platform. They don't always go to your blog. It amplifies your content to a larger and wider audience. So you can share articles that solve a, uh, a common challenge within your industry. Let's say knowledge that you have a unique uh, way to apply your personal experiences. You can share images, you can share uh, videos, you can share your YouTube content. All of these uh, forms of content can be shared on LinkedIn and they should. Yes. Yes. Is it safe also best practice that if you are repurposing, like have social media you're saying, also seeing on and then also point people to your blog as well? Good strategy. Let's say um, in the footer, in the footer of the uh, article, uh, you can, let's say, have you should have a call to action at the bottom of the article, and you can include, I like to do my email list and build my email list that way, but you can direct people to the blog, or you can have a hyperlink in the footer. Now, when it comes to the, let me see, I'd rather, let's see. Skills and endorsements with the time we have available. Your skills and endorsements are basically the, the keywords that you are proficient at, and other people within your LinkedIn network have the ability to endorse you for a particular skill. So if you look at, uh, let's say, my profile, and I have 99 plus for SharePoint. When someone is making a hiring decision for SharePoint, chances are I'm going to be in the running because I am heavily endorsed by my network. Sit on your head. Never, yes. never. It's like a cat. Girl said. Oh, wow. Now, recommendations. Recommendations are very important. I just got a new recommendation. How about that? I didn't even ask for it. Okay. Giving out recommendations like you get. You? Okay. So recommendations in today's digital economy, digital workplace, digital work center are just as important as the uh, let's say the typical recommendation or referral 
or professional reference in the job context. This is even more powerful because now you can, when a recommendation is given, you can go and click on that individual's profile and find out more information about them. Whereas with a traditional professional reference, the person may get on the phone, but there's no background check of that individual. So if you have someone who is highly credentialed and they do a uh, recommendation on your profile, it boosts your recommend, uh, reputation because of the phenomenon of social proof. So if, uh, let's say a celebrity, to give a totally unrelated uh, example, if a celebrity recommends a restaurant, chances are people are going to eat at that restaurant. Whereas if you go to a restaurant and it's empty, then no one's going to eat. No one likes to eat at an empty restaurant, right? So these are, so with recommendations, what I recommend is a best practice with the time that we have available. I have the great Nate Chamberlain. Uh, you people, great people. So with um, recommendations, there's a few things here. Don't be afraid to ask. And let's say, you can ask for recommendations during the time you're at, let's say at the peak of accomplishment. So if you just delivered a great project, ask for the recommendation. If you're about to get fired, don't ask for the recommendation. <laughs> Make sense? Okay. So, uh, well, you, but you can hide the recommendation. Oh, you, can. you can choose what recommendations you want on your profile. Okay. It is for your benefit, not for your demise. So, and people are always searching LinkedIn. LinkedIn is one platform where people do not search by accident. So it's very deliberate. If someone lands on your profile, they are looking to learn more about you. Uh, with the premium version of LinkedIn, I can see who has viewed my profile and follow up with them. With the, let's say, unpaid version, you, it just says someone viewed your profile. In this case, it is, um, so that's one vote for uh, premium. I have it. I like. Are it. there any deals on, on getting premium anymore? Or mm, well, no. It's um pretty much um sixty nine ninety nine a month. A month. Yes. Yes. Was we done quiz just before recommendation quiz? Yes. And what is it The let's take a look. Yes, just, uh, yeah, yeah, take, take, take. So, this lets you see what, a more or less proficiency in a given uh, skill set. So, it's an assessment that lets you promote your skills to a public audience. Mm. So, if you are very skilled in an area, you want to take the skills quiz so that it is permanently associated with your uh, profile. You're welcome. You are welcome. Okay, so that is uh, recommendations. Also, you want to fill out your accomplishments section here. And in this case, I have uh, Toastmasters, which again, if I want to be known for public speaking and or communication, then credibility indicators is a powerful way to do so. And your volunteer experience is very important because it shows that you have a life outside of work and you have a mindset to giving purpose and more or less being uh committed to causes greater than yourself so if you uh let's say do volunteer work you want to make sure that's included in your volunteer experience section now another key area when we talk about uh let's say the uh, people also view, this is based on the quality of keywords that you put into LinkedIn. That is the context 
that LinkedIn uh, will provide. So if these individuals, they are searching for, these are the people they're searching for in addition to your profile. So there's no clear way to know where you stand than to see what people are here. So there's a lot of literally all things SharePoint. Uh, Microsoft MVP, and that is based on the content that I'm sharing within my about section and throughout my overall profile. Let's see, let's head over to Office 365 with the time that we have available. Now to add LinkedIn to your profile within Office 365, you will click on your apps. And as you can see here, you have LinkedIn. So I did not, this is not custom code. I did not add this app to Office 365, it is here. You will click on LinkedIn, it will authenticate. If you're not logged into LinkedIn, you will have to enter your credentials. And as you can see, LinkedIn will show up here on your dashboard. When it comes to adding content as we wrap things up, you can utilize Microsoft Flow in order to do so. Let me take a step back here. When you configure Office LinkedIn within Office 365, you must start in the admin center. Let's see. Let me see. We have a few more minutes of slides, and we will wrap things up for here and get you to the prizes. Yes. Ha. Ah. You guys at score in Baltimore, George? No. The glass, yeah, well, talk to the folks in New York for the report they are. Yeah. Well, they have uh, some workshops that are paid and some that are free. Yeah, well, uh, everything is paid. I mean, and it is that, yeah, it's not good. So within your Microsoft or Office 365 tenant, uh, if you go to Azure Active Directory, and you go into the user settings built into office 365 you have the ability to turn on linkedin account connection and you just make sure that yes is selected another best practice as we close out is to import linkedin profile data into your outlook uh, account so within, you would export the contacts from LinkedIn and import them uh, using the screenshot here. And this is a screenshot of importing CSV file provided by LinkedIn into Microsoft Outlook so that LinkedIn profile data is incorporated into your account. This is the screenshot of configuring Outlook for, excuse me, for LinkedIn. And the LinkedIn profile card, you can see here that LinkedIn is uh, a tab that is added to when you click on a profile within LinkedIn. I want to get you guys over to the uh, prizes, but in closing, in closing, this session is recorded and 
If you text LinkedIn 2018 to 44222, you'll get all the uh, resources that have been created in this presentation. So reputation is an asset. Reputation is also like gravity, where you can be ignorant of the laws of gravity. You can ignore the laws of gravity, but you're still bound to the laws of gravity. So hiring decisions are made each and every day using search engines and reputation and utilizing LinkedIn to manage your reputation is a powerful strategy to ensure that you are successful in your career, your business, and your life. I am Chad D.B. Laser, and thank you very much. I am. Okay, I'll see you then. Remember, we need to put that we share. We can share. Link in zero one. We put it like here, right? Like here. No, you can text. Them. Text. Use a um, text message. Like SMS. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And what's about uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator? Is just for professional. Uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator is uh, the premium version built for sales professionals oh. and or social selling. And I wanted to ask you, can you give me your...